proclaimed a bodily resurrection. And why is that so important? Well, because if Jesus is still dead, there's no Savior. We need a living Savior to help us through the day. We need a living Savior to guarantee us a place in heaven. That's the question now. Did Jesus rise from the dead? He claimed it. He said, destroy this temple, speaking of his body, and in three days I'll raise it up again. So that's the question. Did he or did he not? People say, well, I don't think Jesus really rose from the dead. And there are four basic ones. The first one is the stolen body theory. This is the oldest theory. The soldiers came rushing back into the city and said, he's gone. Well, what are we going to do about it? Well, here's some money. You go around, spread the rumor that while you were sleeping, his disciples came and stole his body. Well, you, any halfwit can see through that one, can't you? Well, if, if the soldiers were sleeping, how did they know who stole the body? It doesn't make any sense at all, does it? And if in fact that's what happened, who did steal the body? Did his disciples steal the body? Well, if his disciples stole the body, would they be willing to die for what they knew was a lie? Every one of them died a violent death. They watched other people die violent deaths. What kind of monsters were they that they would allow innocent people to die for what they knew was a lie? No, there's no evidence of that at all. These men who were so timid beforehand, when they met the resurrected Christ, became as bold as lions and went through the whole world telling everybody, Jesus really is alive and paid for it with their lives. There's another theory. It's the switch tomb theory. Well, these poor women, they were distraught, they were weeping, and they took a wrong turn somewhere and ended up at an empty grave. And they thought, he's alive, he's alive. And they went running back into the city. What had happened was they went the wrong route and they went to the wrong tomb. Oh, I see. So, in other words, when Peter and John came then, they went to the wrong tomb. And, of course, the angels were at the wrong tomb. The soldiers were at the wrong tomb. And all the Jews had to do was go to the right tomb and say, excuse me, folks, you missed it by a few hundred yards. His body's still here. But no, no, there was no body to be found. Jesus was alive. There's another notion. Um, it's called the swoon theory. And the idea is Jesus didn't really die. Now, Pilate thought he was dead or he never would have released the body. The Roman soldiers who were experts at crucifixion, they thought he was dead. And when they came to his body, they had been told to break his legs to hurry up the death process, but they saw he was dead already. And if that's as far as it had gone, maybe they could have been fooled. But you know, one of them said, we better make sure, took a spear and drove it up into his pericardium and blood and water came out, the proof that he was really dead. That's pretty convincing proof, isn't it? If you have a spear driven into your heart. Well, then his disciples, they thought he was dead. They wrapped him in a hundred pounds of spices and linen that covered his face and his whole body, mummy form. Now he had been without food and water for several days. He had been beaten within an inch of his life. Many sold, uh, criminals died just from the beating. His back was made like a plowed field. He had been uh, pierced through his hands and feet. A spear had been driven into his side. He was now suffocated with this hundred pounds of spices and linen over his face, left in a tomb for three more days without food and water, and then somehow extricated himself from all of these garments, pushed back a massive stone that three working women had no idea how they would move from the outside. Somehow with his fingertips he moved it and then overcame the Roman soldiers, staggered into the city and convinced his disciples he was the resurrection and the life. Now again, if you can believe that, you've got more than enough faith to believe the gospel account. The final view, which is one that is promoted sometimes at our doors by certain cults, they say that Jesus did rise, but it was just his spirit that rose from the dead. It wasn't a bodily resurrection. But Jesus had said, destroy this temple, speaking of his body, I will raise it up again. He said to his disciples, go ahead, handle me and see. A spirit does not have flesh and bone as you see me have. This is the testimony 
not only of Jesus' friends, but of his worst enemy on planet Earth, the man handpicked to destroy Christianity, he confessed Jesus really was alive. Jesus claims that everyone who comes to him, no matter hardened, no matter how bitter, no matter how hurt by life, no matter how damaged by sin, Jesus promises to take you as is and transform your life. If there was a ghost of a chance that it would work, I'd say give it a try, wouldn't you? <laughs> it seems to make sense to me. Now, you know, the writer to the Hebrews says, you take the word of men, you go into a bank, and you put your congealed sweat, your hard-earned cash, down on the counter, and you give it to a person, you don't even know where they live. You only know their first name because they got a tag there. And you trust your money to a stranger. You take important documents and throw them in a little mail slot. You don't even know who's going to pick them up. You drag your trash out to the road and you leave it there for somebody. You never see the guy, but you just expect that week after week he pulls up and looks after your garbage for you. We take the word of men. We trust men. God says, can't you trust my word? Can't you take me at my word? You say, well, I don't believe the Bible because I don't know who wrote it. Well, who wrote the math tables? Anybody know? No. But we use them because they work, right? That's why I use the Bible, because it works. Two plus two equals four. You can prove it. Hydrogen plus oxygen equals water. You say, don't be ridiculous. If you want to have a flammable situation, you put hydrogen and oxygen together. You can blow up this room with it. Are you telling me that if you put hydrogen and oxygen together in the right combination, you can put fires out with it? You can actually pour it on fire and put the fire out? You say, well, don't believe me. Give it a try. If it's not true, you'll find out soon enough. <laughs> right? But the fact is, you'll find out it is true believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll be saved. It's, I mean, if it's not true, you'll find out. But everybody who tries and finds out it is true. You got to be sincere. You got to be honest with God. This isn't a game. This is your eternal destiny. But if you're honest with God, he already knows all about you. He knows every sin you've committed, every sin you wish you could forget, every sin of the mind, every sin of the body, every sin that you have committed and every sin you have committed by omitting things you have should have done that you didn't do and sins that you did do that you shouldn't have done he knows the whole story the whole sad lot and you know what he loves you just the same and he proved it by giving his life his son to die for you God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son listen he is really serious about you he paid everything for you Jesus the richest person in the universe became poor for you so that's the issue. Are we prepared to take God at his word? If there was a 0.0001% chance that it could be true, wouldn't you give it a try? You'd be mad not to, wouldn't you? And so that's what the Bible says. Go ahead and give it a try. Find out if it's true. Put God to the test. That's the message of the Bible. Jesus claimed to die for others. And so far, everyone from all around the world, different cultures, religious backgrounds, socioeconomic levels, everyone who has taken him up on the offer has found out that it's true. Amazing, isn't it?